This is not marketing. No! Prepare for learning. The Inside Story of Cannabidiol. A couple of years ago, a remarkable thing happened when CBD became legal in all 50 of the U.S. states. If you remove CBD from the THC, coming from the cannabis plant or the hemp plant, CBD is now legal to use as a nutritional supplement. Since that time, of course, the market has exploded with interest. And this conversation today is about the physiological effects of CBD on the human body. Truly, CBD is not just another nutritional supplement. This short conversation is going to accurately describe the intense scientific research that's going on around the world, but in simple language so that everyone understands of why CBD is so important for human physiology. In order to comprehend the significance of CBD to our health, we first have to ask the simple question, what exactly is our health? Is it just the absence of disease? If you don't have symptoms, you must be healthy? Well, it's actually a far more important question and a deeper question than just that. How does human physiology actually work? How is it designed? In general, every aspect of human physiology is based on the balance between polar opposites, between the yin and the yang. This creates homeostasis. When we look at specific parts of our physiology, like the immune system, the yin and the yang, the opposites, would be anti-inflammation and inflammation, the negative and the positive. When those two things are in balance, your immune system is functioning properly. If we're talking about our nervous system, then we're talking about the forces of excitation and the forces of inhibition or relaxation. When we're talking about our endocrine system or our hormone system, we have the forces of breaking down tissue or the catabolic hormones, and we have the anabolic hormones which build up tissue. When those two forces are in balance, we have homeostasis of our endocrine or hormone system. If we're talking about oxidation, we have forces of antioxidation and forces of oxidation. Most people think that you have to just take buckets full of antioxidants all the time as if oxidation is bad. Not true. If you didn't have oxidation and the forces of oxidation in your bodies, you couldn't survive even one minute. Those two things have to be in balance. They have to be in homeostasis. All of our physiological systems have to be in this constant state of homeostasis, a dynamic balance. The stronger your physiology's ability to stay in homeostasis is, the more robust your capacity to be in homeostasis is, the healthier you are. Next question, what exactly is dynamic balance? This is kind of difficult to understand, and the best way is a model, a model of a mobile. So here we go, we're looking at a mobile. You've probably played with this when you were a kid, perhaps you even have some of these in your home right now. We have all of these horizontal elements with little strings hanging down from them, and we have these stars hanging at the bottom. In this particular model, the stars represent signaling molecules. If this is a model of your neurology, the stars that are hanging would be the neurotransmitters. If this was a mobile of your endocrine system, your hormone system, then the hanging stars would be hormones. And if this was your immune system, the hanging stars would be cytokines or lymphokines. These are the signaling molecules that make your immune system work. Now, what makes this a dynamic balance is, as you know, if you change anything in this mobile, it affects everything in this mobile. Let's say, for example, that the star down here at the bottom, that's now big and swollen and red, gets weighted down as if you took a paper clip or some weight and attached it to the mobile hanging in your home. That star is going to pull down and everything in the mobile is going to shift. You can't change any one element without affecting every element in a mobile. What's interesting, however, is that initially the mobile is going to go through these oscillations where things are bouncing up and down and shifting up and down until the oscillations slowly quiet and the mobile finds a new point of homeostasis, a new point of balance. Now everything is shifted in the mobile. The stars are all in different locations now 
and many of the sticks are no longer horizontal. They're kind of twisted at one angle or another. But our physiologies are so smart that they will find a new point of balance. During the shifting and the oscillation is when you feel sick, when you have symptoms. But our body, our physiology will compensate and the new balance will be found and you can continue to function. Now let me explain how modern medicine with pharmaceutical drugs interacts with this system. Let's say you have another one of these stars, another one of these elements that goes a little bit haywire, this star over here on the left. So you're feeling lousy and you go to the doctor and the doctor does some kind of test and decides, okay, we need to give you a drug. And so you take a drug, some kind of pharmaceutical drug, to deal with this one element over here on the left that's now gone somewhat haywire. And the drug is designed to clamp down on those symptoms. Notice that the drug is designed to deal with exactly that one star. Not the entire system of the mobile, but that one star and the symptoms that it's creating. However, we know that pharmaceutical drugs have many, many unintended side effects. And so, because of the drug you're taking now, another star goes haywire, and you have more symptoms, and now you have to take a drug to counteract the symptoms from the first drug. And so you clamp down on that star as well. And then a third one goes haywire, and so you clamp down on that one as well. And let's say now you seem to be stable, you seem to be functioning, and everything is copacetic. Well, is it really? Everything seems to be stable here because the mobile isn't shifting anymore, but let's take a closer look at your system. This is what's actually happening. You now have all sorts of artificial weights attached to your physiology, to your mobile. You can see that your physiology is under a lot of stress. The weight of all these different drugs and these overexpressed stars are pulling down heavily on this mobile and you can see that some of those bars are now bent because they're under so much tension. One more little thing going wrong with your physiology, perhaps it's something as simple as a cold or a little virus or some kind of drug interaction that you didn't anticipate and now something breaks. This system is under so much tension and so much stress that the oscillations would be huge and you might find yourself in the ICU under life support. So in a nutshell, pharmaceutical drugs work at the level of the symptoms, not the systems, which causes enormous strain on your human physiology. So I've showed you this in order to point out, to highlight the differences between how pharmaceutical drugs work at the level of the stars and how CBD works. CBD, instead of working at the level of the stars, works at the level of the system of balance, at the nexus of balance. That would be in these crystalline green orbs where the, where the string attaches to the stick. That's where the system knows if it's in balance or out of balance. It can't tell what's happening at the level of the star, but it knows what's happening right there in that green crystalline orb where balance is maintained and established. So in the model that we are using, the mobile, to highlight how our physiology works, that's where CBD works. Now, in our actual physiology, where does CBD work? Let's take a closer look. Here we go. We're going to travel into our physiology, right into our central nervous system. And we're going to see at the level of individual cells that the cell surface is covered with these green receptors. These are receptors for CBD. And when the CBD binds to that receptor, it sends a message into the cell, which travels all the way down into the nucleus of the cell where the intelligence of our entire physiology is contained within our chromosomes. So here a chromosome is going to unwind and you're going to see the actual DNA that contains the codes for everything that our body does. This is like the software that runs our physiology. Genes are the codes for every protein that our bodies make, including all the signaling molecules that run our physiology such as our neurotransmitters that run our nervous system, our hormones that run our endocrine system, and our cytokines that run our immune system. So imagine, for instance, that these are cells in your pancreas making insulin. 
This is happening in a million cells, let's say, all producing huge amounts of insulin to keep your blood sugars in proper balance. Again, your insulin is a hormone, which is a protein. So we see that throughout our physiology, we have receptors specifically designed to bind with CBD, and CBD has its effect on the nucleus of our cells where proteins are being made. So which proteins are being made from the influence of CBD? CBD modulates the transcriptions of over 1,100 genes that make the signaling molecules that naturally reduce inflammation in our central nervous system and throughout our immune system, restoring homeostasis to both our immune and to our central nervous systems. So as you can see on the left side of the slide, CBD upregulates the genes that create anti-inflammatory biochemicals for our, our immune system and upregulates the GABA system in our central nervous system, which brings calmness to our central nervous system. And on the right side of the slide, we can see that CBD downregulates the genes that create the inflammatory biochemicals in our immune system and also downregulates the glutamate system in our central nervous system, which causes overexcitation. So now, let's go back to the model of our physiology and see how CBD affects it. We go back to our one star that's out of whack, and now we introduce CBD, and voila! We see a cascade going through all the points of balance in our system, and the mobile comes back to homeostasis to its original, stable, beautiful balance. Now, our physiological systems are far more complex than the simple mobile that I've been showing you here with only 12 stars. For instance, our immune system has 350 different signaling molecules on it. So it's an enormous mobile, which also explains why there's so many unintended drug interactions. Because if you affect any one of those little stars, it's going to shift all 350 of those other stars. And who could possibly figure that out? So in fact, here's what our immune system actually looks like. And of course, when you introduce CBD to our amazingly complex physiology, in the immune system, the cascade of homeostasis trickles down through all 350 of those stars. It's a beautiful thing. Bottom line, CBD causes a cascade of homeostasis through our entire central nervous system and our entire immune system. So why is this happening? Because as I mentioned before, we have receptors in our physiology for CBD. This is called the endocannabinoid system. Back in medical school, we didn't even know about the endocannabinoid system. It was only discovered in the 1990s by Dr. Raphael Meshulam from the Hebrew University in Israel, where an amazing amount of incredible biomedical technology innovations are coming from that tiny little country. So the endocannabinoid system is a network of cells throughout our body that have receptors for CBD. In fact, there are more receptors for CBD in our body than any other kind of receptor. So the endocannabinoid system is truly the largest network of its kind throughout our entire physiology. Among other things, Dr. Mashulam also discovered that we make our own cannabinoids in our body. This is anandamide and 2-AG. Anandamide is something that we create when we're meditating, hence it's called the bliss molecule. And 2-AG, as well as anandamide, are released in mother's milk when a child is breastfeeding. So no wonder that child is so calm and happy when they're breastfeeding. Those two compounds are also associated with a runner's high. You know that point when you're running and suddenly you're in bliss, you kind of break through the wall and now you just feel wonderful? Those two are natural cannabinoids that our own bodies make and bind to our CBD receptors. So here we have our CBD receptors in our central nervous system and in our cardiovascular system where immune cells are constantly circulating. Of course, in our bone marrow where the cells are actually manufactured and of course in our immune organs. Our major immune organs are the intestines, the spleen, and the bladder. And last but not least, the lymph system. 
So our bodies are filled with CBD receptors. So what? Now you know the story. Why is this important? Why does this matter? Why is this important to you or me? Or if you're interested in the business of distributing CBD, why is this important to humanity? If you live in urban America or urban anywhere in the world, you are inflamed. Your central nervous system is inflamed as well as your immune system is inflamed and nobody is exempt because our physiological systems are under assault. Assault from environmental toxins such as herbicides, insecticides and heavy metals, chronic biological infections such as bacteria, viruses, fungus and molds, and last but not least, our inflammatory diets, which are very poor, usually way too much sugar, which causes leaky gut, an inflamed gut, that allows certain bacterial infestations to occur that gets into our blood, into our systems. So, what kind of symptoms, what kind of stress do all these things cause to us? If your immune system is inflamed, you might be suffering from autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, inflamed bowel disease, lupus and thyroid, or fibromyalgia, or even MS, and your skin, psoriasis and eczema, and all sorts of other chronic infections. Do you realize many of these things didn't even exist 100 or 150 years ago? Incidence of these kind of diseases is growing throughout the last century because of the environmental load of toxins that we are now absorbing into our systems. Now let's take a look at your central nervous system. If it is inflamed, what kind of things might you be suffering from? Brain fog, migraines, epilepsy, anxiety and PTSD, ADD, ADHD, autism, and insomnia. Again, 100 or 150 years ago, these kind of symptoms, these kind of diseases were really rare. And over the last 150 years, because of the insult, the ongoing insult to our systems, these kind of things are more and more prevalent with every single year. So, if you are suffering from any of these conditions, any of these symptoms, CBD might provide you with tremendous healing, tremendous relief, right through your own natural endocannabinoid system that brings homeostasis, both to your immune system and to your central nervous system. So in conclusion, what have we learned from this conversation? That health is achieved through physiological homeostasis, right through our natural endocannabinoid systems. And therefore, CBD is an indispensable catalyst for optimal health. For those of you who might